Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. You know, I haven't skipped a weekly upload in about four and a half years, which equates to roughly 216 straight weeks of posting weekly videos. And with it being a holiday week and all, I thought that maybe this would be the year I would perhaps take a brief break and skip creating a video this week and just pick back up after the holidays. But I received so many questions regarding a very specific portion of last week's video, all about the hidden mid-tone slider inside of Lightroom that I figured I would quick or I would quick create a quick video and just address it. So there was a portion of that video towards the end where I was running through some of the, the targeted local adjustments I applied to that the image of the video. I went through and showed the mask I applied to darken down and bring out some drama in the sky. Then I reviewed the, the gradient filter I applied to the foreground to create kind of a, a dark to light transition zone. Then I finally went over the radio filter I applied to the middle portion of the image and I called it a reverse vignette. And this either caused some confusion or or maybe a great deal of interest or maybe a little bit of both. And in this video, I'm going to uh, go over how and why I do that and in which situations it works best in is I think that that was by far the most important aspect of that entire edit. So this is the, the final version of that image. This is the, the version I, I shared on Instagram and Facebook last week. And this is the version that I was working on in the video. And if I come up here and I'll just toggle on the mask I was just mentioning real quick. So this is that dark to light transition zone in the foreground and uh, right there. And then of course, this is the sky right here. So nothing too crazy. But whenever I use a vignette, there's two ways to do it. You can either use the vignette slider inside of Lightroom, or you can use a custom vignette by using a radio filter. And depending on exactly how the image is composed is what dictates which, uh, I guess, which vignetting route I go. So if the image is very symmetrical, like this image is pretty symmetrical, the area of interest is pretty much in the center of the frame. This is the type of scenario where I'll just come down here, I'm gonna close this, to the effects section and just go ahead and apply a vignette. So I normally apply, whenever I use this, I usually am right around minus 15, but to make it easier to see at home, I'm gonna put this to minus 20. And if I toggle this on and off, this is before and after, before, and after, and real quick, and I know everybody knows this, but the purpose of the vignette, darken down the corners to attract less attention of the, of the viewer's eye to the corners of the scene. And when you darken down the corners of the scene, that naturally is going to leave the center area of your image a little bit brighter. And since brighter areas of your scene is what attracts the viewer's attention, that's ultimately the purpose of the vignette, to draw the viewer's eye into the center of the image. But in this particular uh, situation, the, the vignette, it's definitely darkening down the corners, but the center area of the scene doesn't appear to be much brighter than those areas that we darken. So what do you do in this particular scenario? And this is really where that kind of reverse vignette technique comes from. So I'm going to come up here to the effects panel. I'm gonna open this, or I should, did I say close the effects panel? Well, if I didn't, that's what I meant. And then I'm gonna open up the masks. And I do wanna preface something real quick. I did not coin the, or I should say, I don't know if this is called a reverse vignette. I don't know if other people do this. I've been doing it for quite a few number of years. And it doesn't work on every single image, or I should say every image doesn't require this, but I have found that a lot of images, in my opinion, of, of my own, can definitely be benefited, can definitely benefit from this technique. So if it's called a reverse vignette, I'm not 100% certain, or maybe it should be called the, the brighter side of a vignette. I, I, I'm not 100% clear on what the naming convention could be, but anywho, it, it really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna come up here to create new mask. I'm gonna come down here to radial gradient, and I'm just gonna draw a big radial gradient right across the area of interest, which is definitely gonna be the, the center portion of the scene in the mountain area right through here. I'm going to make this a little bit larger, maybe bring it down just a touch to somewhere about right there. I'm going to bring the feather down to maybe about 50 for this. And I'm just going to bring that exposure up. And you can see as I rock this back and forth, what that's doing is just bringing more air or more focus to the most important aspect of the scene, which is the mountain. So I'll kind of overdo it a little bit for the video and I'll turn this on and off. So this is before and after, before and after. And if you look at the area up here in the thumbnail, as I toggle this on and off, you can really see that difference. So this is before and after, before, and after, and I'm gonna come down here, close this, I'm gonna come back to the effects section, and okay, the feather was already at 75. I think the default here is 50, 
but I always like to bring it up to about 75 whenever I use the vignette slider, just so that the area of vignette to the area that's not vignetted is that transition zone is a little bit softer. I like to kind of boost that feather up just a little bit. But I think that that does a fantastic job of just darkening down those corners, but also just brightening up that center area just a little bit because some images need that. Here's another good example of this where this image, I'm going to actually create a custom vignette because the main area of interest is not in the dead center area of the photograph. It's kind of off on an angle. So I'm going to come up here and let's hit create new mask. We're going to do a radial gradient. When I do a custom vignette, I like to make the image a little bit smaller in the scene just so you can more easily kind of make the, the, the radial filter larger to go outside of the frame itself. So I'm going to come up here. We're just going to create a massive radius across the massive radial filter, I should say. And the key to a custom vignette is this little invert button right here. You want to make sure you hit that because you basically want to be targeting the area outside of the radio filter, not the area inside of the radio filter. And you can see the area around here in red that's being impacted. I'm going to kind of just bring this down a little bit, bring it to about maybe right here. I think that that looks pretty good. And let's just darken down those corners. And you can see as I rock this back and forth, you can see what's being impacted here. And I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more than normal just so you can easily see it. And let's toggle this on and off. So this is before and after, before and after. And I think that that looks pretty good. I think I'm actually gonna put this on an angle just a little bit to about something about maybe right here. Let's see what that does. I think that that looks a little bit better. And now, since the corners are a little bit darker, I'm gonna boost up the area of the mountain, which is the main area of interest. That's the area that is most interesting. That's the reason I took this photograph. That is the, the aspect of this image that I absolutely love. And I wanna make sure that that really, really pops in this photograph. So I'm gonna come up here to create new mask. I'm gonna come down here to radial gradient. I'm gonna draw a radius around the mountain itself. I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna put it on an angle as well, similar to the custom vignette. I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna stretch it across to about right here. I think that looks pretty good. And instead of decreasing the exposure, I'm gonna bring the exposure up. And as I rock this back and forth, you can see what that's doing. So I'm gonna bring it up to maybe about half a stop or maybe even a little bit more to about right there. And let's toggle this on and off. So this is before and after before and after, and once again, looking at that thumbnail up there, before, after, before, and after. I also have a mask on the sky up here that I'll toggle on and off so you can see. There's a very subtle difference there. But if I toggle all of these, and the, the most important aspect of this is this right here, the custom vignette, and this right here, the reverse vignette. And when you combine those two together, I think it has a very, very powerful effect. So when I toggle this on and off, this is before, and after, before and after, and definitely keep in mind or pay attention up here to the thumbnail, before and after, before and after. That was a lot of before and afters, but I think that's an incredibly beneficial technique. Like I said earlier, I don't, maybe I said it, I'm not 100% certain, but not every image can or it would benefit from this, but from my experience, especially somebody who kind of underexposes a lot of photographs uh, a little bit sometimes in specific situations, I think that is the scenario where a reverse vignette definitely shines by darkening down those corners, but also boosting up that center area or boosting up the exposure of the area of interest to really, really make that come through. So I didn't, you know, last week's video was about the mid-tone slider. I just glossed over the reverse vignette and that's my bad. I should have went into a little bit more detail about it, but I hope that this video kind of cleared up any questions that anybody might have regarding that. And before I do wrap everything up, I just want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog posts and logo, 
just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I really do hope you enjoyed this week's video. Like I said, any questions that you have about vignetting or custom vignetting or reverse vignetting or anything, honestly, please leave those in the comments section below and I'll get back in touch with you as soon as I possibly can. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already, share the, uh, the video with uh, friends or family or maybe your local photo club. And um, as always, I, I really do hope you enjoyed this week's video. I hope you and your family, wherever you are in the world, are having a, a happy and safe and relaxing holiday season. And as always, thanks so much for, for all the support this year. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.